Alright, this is the seventh tutorial, and I know what you're thinking, it looks like it did in the fifth tutorial. Well, it is a graphical re representation, however, this was the first slide I showed you in the last one, however, the rest is completely different. I'm just... Don't don't go into shock thinking I'm teaching the same thing over and over again. I'm not. I just wanted to show you that we are talking about classes and methods here. Um, this is basically the diagram uh, of classes and methods. Basically, a class has methods, and the methods are what the class does. Um, so this class is like a it's a car class, and uh, the methods of this car are steering, the car radio. Uh, how much gas is left, distance driven, and uh, if the tires are changed. Those are common classes that you might uh, put in a car in a video game or something. Uh, most of my stuff is theoretical whenever I'm giving graphical repu representations. So, uh, since I've already went over classes and methods in my last tutorial, which I would highly recommend you watch before you watch this one, in this one I'll be going over something called objects and fields. They're not all that difficult. Um, they will make you be able to do stuff you've never thought possible, perhaps, in uh, C-sharp programming. They can be really, really helpful. And in the next tutorial, I'll be doing something with this stuff, but you need to know what it is. You need to follow along in this tutorial and understand what they are before you go to the next one, or else you'll just be doing stuff in the next one and you won't know what's actually going on. So, uh, let me move on. So classes are pretty powerful things, but let's say you need a lot of classes. Let's say you need, you don't need just one character, but you need a lot of characters. Say you're building an RPG or something. Obviously you're not going to declare out new classes for every single character. You're not going to make a, a class for Odin, you're not going to make a class for Gandorf the Grey. You're, you're not going to make a class for every single character. Um, and because it would take too much time, I mean, making a character for four, three, and two, make, making a character for uh, or a new class for every single one, they all do the same thing. So why would you do that? It would take up a lot of space. So that's why we use objects. Objects are basically an instance of that class. Um, the best way I can describe them is they are basically taking that class and creating a new one on the fly. It's basically generating an instance of that class, a, a part of that class. It, it can do all the things of that class, however it takes on its own uh, fields and properties, it takes on its own thing, instead of just having one of the class. So you could just generate a new character. So here I'm, I'm uh, giving an example. Say we have a public class of character, and we generate a new character by saying character Drake is equal to a new character character Lucian is equal to a new character. Character Marcus is equal to a new character. We're generating new characters here. And they all take on their own in, uh, specific uh, character name. Or a character decoration. So, uh, I've color-coded the red as character classes. Or uh, instances of the character class. This is the character class right here. And uh, the blue represents the actual character class. Um, an object is also known as an instance of a class, like I said before. Um, you're creating new objects of that class, or uh, in other words, we call it instance of that class. It's a new object. Um, however, whenever you generate a new object, when you do generate a new object, how do you tell if they're different? If you're just creating new, ob uh, new objects and they're all the same, what's the point? Obviously, we need to make them different. So. Basically, we've already gone over methods. Methods are what the class does, what it can do. So, here we have a Marcus class. He can do an attack, he can sprint, shoot a gun, rev a chainsaw, throw a grenade. Those are all methods. Those are things he can do. But what is he? What does he look like? What is Marcus? I mean, these are all things he can do, but can't another character we might create called Lucian, can't he do all these things? Well, he can, because they're methods. They're things that they do. Now, that's why we should get into fields next. Fields, they basically define what this object is, wh what the specifics of this object are, what they are, and in some cases, what they know. Uh, in programming, we would say it's what an object knows, but I'm going to define it as what an object is. So, Marcus's fields might be his hair color, 
Um, we can define Marcus by his hair color, maybe his name or his age. Those can all be fields. They can all be properties. Properties is something different. I don't want you to get confused. I'll be going over those later. They're pretty much fields. There's a little differences, though. It's pretty much the same thing as fields. Um, but I'll, I'll go over those more in detail later. Basically, just think of fields as defining the object, uh, separating them from the other ones. So let's create some fields. Let's uh, give an example on how to set a field of a character. Here I've gone over the steps earlier. I created a public class of character, and then I created a new character called Marcus. And then I defined some of his fields, such as the field name. I set Marcus's name is equal to Marcus, right here. Marcus's name is equal to Marcus. And you, you, because it's a string, you have to enclose it in um, quotation marks. And Marcus's hair color is equal to dark brown. Uh, those are also closed in quotation marks. I'm creating a string in this one as well. So basically, that's how you would set a field. And I've, I've color-coded these as well if you want to go over them early, uh, later on. So the new class is in blue. That's the new class. And then these, this is a new object of that class called Marcus. And then this is defining Marcus's name and his hair color using fields. So in this short tutorial, I've gone over what objects are. They're basically instances of a class. They're they're a new a new creation of that class. Say we have a class. We are all humans. We're all humans. However, I'm not like another human named Bob. I am Chris. I'm the instance of of the class of human called Chris. And you might be the instance of the class of human called Tom or something. Uh, that's the way I think of it. And then fields would be defining us. My hair color is blonde, so. Uh, my Chris's property of hair color would be blonde, or field of hair color would be blonde. Property is almost the same thing. So I would review over this and just understand the concept of fields and fields and objects. And uh, once you've understood it, it's it's not that hard of a, hard of a concept. But once you understand it, I would move on to my next tutorial, which I should be uploading around the same time of this one. I'm not quite sure about that. Don't correct me on it later if I don't end up uploading it. I mean, I've only got about 40 minutes until uh, I head off. So, uh, I would expect it soon. I'll see you in my next tutorial, and uh, happy coding, I guess.